Welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. We did a little bit of testing because I wanted to make a determination and at least give everybody a data point on heater elements uh, that we use in stills or in brewing equipment. And uh, the data point gives us an idea of where to start from. So what I did was I took the three gallon uh, mile high kettle that I have uh, and I tested three different elements. I tested the, uh, a 1500 watt element, which is right here at 120 volts. I tested the 2000 watt element at 120 volts. And I tested the 3400 watt element, which I have here. And I did that one at 240 volts. And what I tried to determine was what was the time lapse between start to boil on all three of those. So here in just a moment, I'll show you uh, what our results were. These are those results that I was talking about. You see here that I have the 1500 watt element. Now I had that wired at 120 volts. Now I also had a 2000 watt element wired at 120 volts. But for the 3500 watt element, I wired that one at 240 volts. So I wanted to see what the difference was between the three. And I started, it was 78 degrees Fahrenheit on all three tests. And I measured it from that to a boil. And of course, the time in minutes it took to reach that boil. Now you'll notice here the blue line. Okay, that's my 1500 watt element. You can see how gradual that is. And it took 37 minutes in order for me to achieve a boil. The 2000 watt element spiked and then kind of leveled off at 30 minutes to a boil. But you notice this green line here. This is that 3500 watt element at 240 volts. Well, that one only took 13 minutes, which is what I kind of expected. So that gives you a data point um, on the efficiencies of 120 volts versus 240 volts and also the different sizes of elements. Now, this was in a three gallon kettle. And remember, you can always wire this 3500 watt element at 120 volts, but if you did, you only get 25% of the wattage, which is 875 watts. Now that you've seen that, it kind of gives you an idea. Uh, now again, and again, remember we use a three gallon kettle. Um, when, now when you wire these, I want you to notice on here, see there's only two wires on the back of there. That goes, you got one black and one white, or one black and one white. It doesn't matter, I mean the, the element doesn't care. Your third wire is a ground wire, and the ground wire goes to the side of the pot. And the reason the ground wire is there, that should something electrical happen in a short take place, and it electrifies the pot, at least it's got somewhere to go without electrifying the pot when you grab it, okay? So we've got that. Now, uh, this one is actually wired exactly the same way, but it's hidden inside this coupling. And there's your three prongs. So that's the 120 volts. Now, you know, I also ran this one. This is my 3400 watt. Now, this is a 240 volt element, but I wired it 120 volts. You see, I've got a black one here and a white one here, and I've got my ground right here. So, now remember what we said about that, a 3500 watt element, yeah, it's 3500 watts, 3500 times 0.25, really all I'm getting out of that is 875 watts of power. So it's one fourth of the power if I run it on 120 volts, which I did. I just wired it up to 120 volts. So that's what you got to keep in mind. Now remember, if I did this at 240 volts, here is the difference is that you notice here that I have a black wire, which is the hot, and a white wire, which we call the neutral. Oh, and here's my ground wire slipped off. Okay. If this was 240 volts, I would have a black wire that is 120 volts, and I would have a red wire, in most cases, which is 120 volts. So and it doesn't matter which one of these screws you put it on, but you add those 220 volts together, and you get 240. And the reason you get 240 is because they are 180 degrees out of phase. More about that in another video. Now you'll also have a ground wire. And the ground wire, and you'll probably have a neutral wire. Now some 240 volt wires come four wires or three wires. If it's three wires, it'll look just like this. If it's four wires, you'll have that extra wire. Where's that extra wire go? Well, you can put that right here with the ground because ground and neutral go to the same place. Hmm. Hey, until next time, we're going to talk about pulse wave modulation and efficient ways of heating equipment.
check us out. Until then, happy distilling.